there is a specific recurring moment in my responsibilities as a rabbi that I have no doubt will always be uncomfortable, will always be awkward and sometimes painful. It is the moment at a funeral when we have said the Kelmale, when we recited Kaddish, and the one thing left to do is to allow the visual of the Aron, the visual of the casket, to fade away. In Judaism, we do this by taking on the complicated mitzvah of putting a shovel full of earth into the open ground and on top of the Aron, on top of the casket. I, like most rabbis, I know try in vain to make that moment feel less shocking than it is. And maybe that's a mistake. We try to articulate the process of the mitzvah, how to pick up the shovel, how to use the backside first. I suppose that we do so so that we can take away some of the cringe that comes from the real ikar, the real essence of the moment when we dump that first shovel full and the earth and the rocks land on top of the wood with a harsh thud. For many people, that's when the tears start. And to me, that makes sense. It's a moment that feels out of place, an outlier of crassness or even embarrassment in an ancient service that feels perfect in other ways. And the departure from that perfection is confusing. It's hard. Because after all, one of the dissonances of a funeral is how nice it is. That here we are in suits and ties, dresses or business attire. We sing a beautiful psalm. We speak beautiful words. We ride in limousines to the beautiful cemetery. And we say goodbye. But maybe the moment we should be focusing on is that moment when it's the least beautiful. Maybe losing someone we love is captured most honestly by that so painfully unsubtle thump of dirt hitting wood. When suits and ties and beautiful melodies are replaced by gripping the handle of a shovel with its label half peeled off and our sleeves rolled up, our dress shoes or heels slipping on the loose soil as we awkwardly add thumps of our own. Because that's what death is. That's what loss is. It's an uncomfortable thud. It's messy and awkward, lacking in decorum. It's harsh. It doesn't feel like it belongs. It feels offensive. Like there's no possible way that this is what is really supposed to be happening. But it does. It happens. And we're stunned. The earth drops and it's nothing at all like we were expecting. And then eventually there's the realization that of course it isn't. Of course it's not what we were expecting. Because how could someone being there and then leaving us ever make sense in a way where we know how it's going to feel? It's impossible. That would be the stuff of music and poems of eulogies and black suits of headstones and flower beds. Not of dirt and shovels. Not of rocks and holes. In just a minute, we will be going into the Yizkor service. It's a time for reflection and memory, a time to remember the neshamot, the souls that came before us. During the service, there will be times that will poetically guide us through an array of thoughts and emotions, of smiles and tears. There will be beautiful moments, for sure. Haunting moments, and moments that will feel neatly tied up, proper, like white-gloved ushers leading us to seats of our hearts. But today I want to allow us to pay attention to those other moments. The times when it feels raw. The times when the chazan and the choir lead us through some patches of dissonance when it feels like the chords are wrong, or, or maybe we're hearing them wrong, or when we recite the mourner's cottage and some of us stumble over the words and some of us are reciting too quickly or too slowly and throwing off the cadence of the recitation. And most importantly, I want to give us the space to give ourselves the permission 
to sit in the silence when it's there. And instead of looking for another paragraph to read or something else to keep our attention, to let the silence be the dirt and to be the shovel. To allow ourselves to feel the things that are in many ways the truest things that we can feel in this moment. And maybe that's the realization that we're still grieving. Or maybe it's feeling guilty for grieving too quickly or, or not at all. Maybe it's unanswered questions, things left unsaid. Maybe it's us being angry, angry that they left us. Or maybe it's the anger that it was them and not us that were taken away. And maybe it's just a simple understanding that our life is different without them. That the adjustments to their absence is crushing. That we miss them so much it physically hurts. And knowing that loving someone that much reveals a vulnerability in us that can be terrifying. Whatever it may be, Yizkur is the time to hear this very important reminder. It's okay. That wherever you are, that whatever you're feeling, is okay. That crying, that laughing, that sitting down or standing up, that saying every prayer or saying not a single prayer, is okay. Because this is the time when the earth hits the wood. But it's also the time when we are here together as a family to figure out what that feels like. And in this moment of sanctity, of community, of remembrance, we are here. God is here. And maybe that's enough. <laughs>